Focus 109 Women in Ministry, and we mentioned a number of times the Melchizedek Priesthood. We, in a f about three or four places, and so the Lord is impressing on us that in this lesson, lesson 11, we should now have an up close look at the priesthood, the Melchizedek priesthood, what it is in reality, so that we can understand. Because apart from what Yeshua proclaimed, that he came to seek and save the lost, which included male and female, apart from a little contribution from Peter in one passage in 1 Peter 2 9 and 10, the person that the Lord used to break down what the Melchizedek priesthood is in reality, the content of it, more than any other human being that has ever lived on earth, was Paul the Apostle. So if you understand the Melchizedek priesthood, you understand why it is impossible for Paul to shut down the ministry of all women. You understand how it is not possible for Paul to say women should never speak. And it's confirms the thesis of this cause that Paul was addressing married women in Ephesus, in Corinth. He was trying to bring order because the church was at a nascent stage and women who were coming from Gentile world or from, you know, the Jewish tradition and were coming into the faith, some of them met environments like Ephesus and Corinth, which was so, you know, filled with brash women who tried to dominate men and tried to rule men and didn't have, a, you know, didn't accept the authority of their husband, so to say. And Paul was addressing that. And brothers and sisters, the religious world has taken it to mean Paul shut down the women's or women entirely. So let's look at the Melchizedek priesthood. Father in heaven, gracious you are. Have your way by your spirit. Bring revelation. For revelation is the currency of the kingdom. When we understand, we are liberated. Have your way. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. So we need to repeat the reason why many religious groups and denominations in Christendom reject women in ministry and specifically in the fivefold as apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers is that their frame of reference is often the Aaronic or Levitical priesthood. Because that priesthood was male professional priestly caste that ministered the old covenant. And to what matter, such denominations just take three things Paul said out of context without understanding the bigger strategic vision the Lord gave to Paul. They now use it to mean that women are excluded from ministry and should not minister. So... It is important to know that in this cause, the Lord has enabled us to examine those passages and see what Paul was saying and what he wanted to achieve. And before we close this course, we're still going to come to some of the things he referenced in his conversation. Men and brethren, religious leaders conveniently ignore the large volume of text in the Pauline epistles, which established that unlike the old covenant, which created an exclusive priesthood, for the Jews, the New Covenant creates limitless opportunities for all who are redeemed to walk intimately with the Heavenly Father, enthrone Yeshua as King, and be used by the Holy Spirit to serve Him, the Church, and humanity with spiritual gifts received by grace. The ironic or Levitical priesthood with its types and symbols was valid only as far as the Old Testament was operational. That covenant was a mere shadow or better things to come. And the insights granted Paul the Apostle concerning the difference between the two covenants is very important that everyone who is called it by the Lord should understand it. So in Hebrews chapter 5, from verse 1 all the way to verse 10, Paul began a conversation. He continued in chapter 6, verse 17 to verse 20, and in chapter 8, from verse 1 all the way to verse 13 to talk about the reality that the old covenant was not to be continued and they made their march in the blood sacrifice of Yeshua where he took paid the price and that he himself was not qualified to be a priest according to the normal Old Testament principle. He came from the tribe of Judah. The priesthood was in the house of uh, Levi in the family of Aaron. 
And so, men and brethren, when Yeshua, the reality of all the types, symbols, and shadows of the old order came to earth, he was anointed to fulfill them in every respect. And as he fulfilled the righteous demand of the law, it was meet that he, as the Lamb of Elohim, on who the sins of the whole world, from Adam to the last person, will be cast upon, will initiate a new priestly in order for the new covenant. In him is the only valid life acceptable to Yahweh the Father. As he instituted the communion and decreed the regular observance, he announced the new covenant in his own blood. And the new covenant was not just based on better promises, it was to be mediated by a new type of priesthood. The writer of the book of Hebrews took time in the extensive scriptures who put it to show that Yeshua, who was not qualified under the old covenant to be a priest, since he was born of that tribe of Judah, as we said, he became a priest not after the old Levitical order, which he fulfilled, but one that is entirely new and radically different. And that is called the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek happened to be Yeshua, who appeared to Abraham in, in Genesis chapter 14. And in John, John chapter 8, Yeshua confirmed that he was that Melchizedek. And Hebrews 7 confirmed that this Melchizedek was without father or mother, without beginning or ending of days, he was called the king of Salem, the king of peace, and only a divine personality. This is what is called a Christophany, the earthly physical manifestation of the eternal Yeshua before the incarnation. is what is called a Christophany, just as any manifestation of you know Elohim generally then the atrium is called a theophany and the greatest theophany was Yeshua himself and so brothers and sisters this priesthood of Melchizedek therefore was made in heaven based entirely on the principle of divine election rather than lineage it's not a matter of who's your father great-grandfather how can you trace your lineage to Adam, um, Aaron or Levi rather is all based on who we are in Yeshua. We are told in Psalm 110 verse 4, The Lord has sworn, I will not repent, thou art a priest forever, after the order of Melchizedek. Yeshua therefore showed how this new priesthood order is activated by the operation and power of Holy Spirit. At the baptism of John, Yeshua went to be baptized, and the heavens opened, and Holy Spirit came upon him. Before he could go to do any miracle, sign, and wonder, he waited, and that was at his 30th year. You see that in Matthew 3, 16 and 17. This new priesthood was to be passed on to not just the 12 apostles, apart from Judas, but also to all the 120 who gathered in obedience for the same anointing. For Yeshua told him in Acts 1, 4 to 8, Listen, I know you are zealous. You want to go. Now you are sure I'm the Messiah. You want to go, but he say, wait. Wait for the promise of the Father. And in verse 8, he says, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, from Jerus both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and in uttermost parts of the earth. In other words, the work of ministry is to be done by the power of the Holy Spirit using human vessels that are surrendered to the Master. And so if you check Acts 1, 1 to 8, then you see from verse 9, uh, verse 12 to, you know, to verse 15, you see that those who gathered at the upper room was not just the 12. It included Mary, the one the Lord used to bring forth Yeshua, included the other women who ministered to him out of their substances, included people on the marketplace and, you know, men, by inference, people like John Mark, a young man, a teenager, was there. By inference, people like Joseph of Arimantia and Nicodemus, they were there. They were in the marketplace. I've said this before and I'll say it repeatedly. Out of the 120 people, only 12 were full-time ministers. And that's what? 10%. The vast majority, 108, 90%. They had all kinds of things they were doing, you know. And they had all kinds of stages in life. Some were poor, some were rich. Some had, some didn't have. And in Acts chapter 2, from verse 1, on the day of Pentecost, Holy Spirit came upon all. He didn't say, let's come only on the 12 disciples. He came on all. 
and all those who receive him and yield themselves to him to use them since then become members of Elohim's family, citizens of the kingdom, and like they are heard, they are all priests after the order of Melchizedek. First Peter 2, 9 and 10 says, You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. A peculiar people meaning no matter your background, your lineage, you were born by a single mom, you were born by a full-fledged family, you were born by in a dysfunctional family, you were born by, you know, people who have nothing to do with the Lord. The day you receive the Lord, you become part of this holy company called the royal priesthood that exercise the authority of the king in two dimensions. As priest, they exercise authority. As priest, they stand between Elohim and people. So Galatians 3, 26 to 29 says, For you are all children of Elohim by faith in Yeshua HaMashiach. For as many as of you has been baptized into Yeshua, have put on Yeshua. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither born nor free. There is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Yeshua HaMashiach. And if you be Yeshua's, then are you Abraham's seed, and here's according to the promise. In the kingdom of Elohim to which we are called, everyone has been ordained before the foundation of the world to function as priests and kings in the earth rim on the side of eternity. Men and brethren, we are told in, Gen in Revelation 13, 8, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not in the written the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. He's telling us that a day will come. Everyone on earth whose name is not in the Lamb's book will worship the Antichrist. Be led by the false prophet. Religion will validate the Antichrist, a political figure. Christian religion will produce the Antichrist. People have given you a, a hair, red hair, you know, he's going to come from among Muslims, he's in a cave in the Middle East, he's going to come from Christendom. In order to be the Antichrist, he'll be able to deceive Christians and Israel, and he can only be one endorsed by religious figures, hailed as champion of the church and champion of the Jews to be the Antichrist. And we are told that those who worship him are those whose names are not in the last book of life slain before the foundation of this world. So things happened before the foundation of the world. That's when the Lord knew, Yeshua knew, because he was omnipresent and omniscient, that man that were about to be created was going to fall. And that's when he volunteered to die for humanity, even before mankind was created. So I told in Ephesians 1, 3 and 4, Blessed be the Elohim and Father of our Lord, Yeshua HaMashiach, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Verse 4, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy without blame before him in love. So it is important to take note of these things, men and brethren, that uh, the priesthood of Melchizedek, it is before time, and it will extend before time. The ironic priesthood, when, you, when a man dies, the priesthood dies with him. It shouldn't then pick up and continue. In the priesthood of Melchizedek, chosen before the foundation of this world, the day you give your life to the Lord, you've connected to that purpose, and when you finish your tenure on earth, you are in the world to come, in the millionaire reign, according to Revelation 1, 6, Revelation 5, 9, and 10, we shall rule and reign with Yeshua in the millionaire reign, a thousand years. He will stay in Jerusalem as King of kings and Lord of lords and will be posted across the world to rule with him and reign with him. Man and brethren, so the problem with those who question whether women, Gentiles, educated and uneducated and uncultured people can become ministers of the gospel is essentially that of trying to put new wine in old wine skis. And Yeshua said it won't work. Luke 5, 36 to 39, he said it won't work. You can't patch up. You can't try to patch up, you know, take religious, I mean, Old Testament paradigm of ministry and you want New Testament truth to work in it. It won't work. That's why the church all over the world, 
The larger wing of the church is falling on evil ways. People are trampling the church underfoot in many countries of the world. Tyrants are trampling the church underfoot. You know, people, venal men, wicked men, evil people whose heart are, are stone are using the church to achieve the objective. Why? Because the church has predominantly taken a pathway that is different from the radical nature of the new covenant. So, those who question if a woman should be minister or better still serve in any of the fivefold offices, they are simply trying to live the new covenant life with the old covenant mentality and mindset. And so, men and brethren, just as Yeshua received unlearned fishermen, hey, tax collectors, the worst of people were tax collectors, very distortional, all manner of men and women, people like Mary Magdalene, cast out seven demons, people like the woman at the well of Samaria, who was a serial adulteress, and Yeshua took them, cleaned them up, and mentored them to become world changers. So is the New Testament priesthood to all, all who will respond to the offer of new life in Yeshua, a relationship with the Father by the indwelling spirit, regardless of their gender or status. We are told in John 1.11, he came to his own, his own received him not, Verse 12, but as many as received him to them, gave him power to become the sons of Abraham, even to them believe on his name. He gave them power to become, the capacity to become. Everyone who has received Yeshua has received that capacity to become a son of Elohim, male, female, young, old. And that sonship is not a maleness. That sonship is responsibility. That the capacity to grow to a place where we check our place in what Elohim ordained for the earth dream and rediscover the power of Genesis chapter 1 from verse 26 that dominion mandate the Lord gave to humanity to, to, to take care of the earth dream on his behalf the more weak and unqualified in the eyes of religious leaders such people are the more the Lord will use them even to confound the mighty that's what we are told in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 from verse 26 for you see your calling brethren how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But Elohim has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And Elohim has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty and base things of the world and things which are despised. Had Elohim chosen, yea, things which are not to bring to naught those things which are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. Men and brethren, the Lord is saying, where you are coming from doesn't matter. Once you are open, the Holy Spirit seals you into Yeshua because of repentance, and you press in, and he comes in to take over your life. You are a minister of the gospel. Your gender doesn't matter. Your background doesn't matter. Your age doesn't matter. So what is the role of Rome in the negation of women in ministry? We need to understand that Rome adopted the Levitical priesthood as an instrument of control. When Rome married the church, the resultant effect was something other than what the Lord planned. This was now a creation of humans. Rome as the empire and the church, the larger wing of the church that was tired of persecution, tired that Yeshua said he was going to prepare a place for us and come and take us. And they, he had not come after 1,000 years, two, I mean, after 100 years, 200 years, he had not come. What's going on? They began to look for relief. And in looking for relief to be spared persecution, they embraced the hand that the Roman Empire stretched out and Rome and church married and in marrying rome decided to take away anything the lord had given the fivefold was taken away the bible was taken away in a place of bible cactism which is doctrines of men that was you know produced by church councils by some theologians where were used to replace the bible you didn't have access to the bible you had access to the cactism the fivefold taken away and in this place created a new Pyramidal hierarchy where one man is the global leader has to do, interpret whatever he wants, live anyhow he wanted. And some of them were extremely venal human beings, had children through multiple, multiple women and all kinds of wickedness that were uh, conducted and above all took on 
the, the Levitical priesthood pattern, the robes, the colors, and all that, so that they will enhance their prestige and value. So as the emperor comes dressed to church, you meet a bishop or priest who is equally dressed and robed in church. And you know what? Replacement theology came on. Everything the Jews, they regard as people who kill Yeshua. And so the European church has now inherited all the promises to Israel. Men and brethren, you need to know the details of this. And with the Levitical team priesthood, Rome gave organized Christian religion a fundamental rejection of the priesthood after the order of Melchizedek. With, and later when they made time, it was a woman to serve as nuns in convents to pray, serve the parishes and diocese, do good works to the poor, but not to minister the sacraments. Now, what is the role of the Protestants in the same process? When Protestantism came in 1517, Protestantism did not go to fundamentally reject some of these aspects of Rome. It just cut the, the tree from the branches and began to create a very funny situation where people also took the same, you know, old decadent Levitical priesthood with the robes wearing it and you see, Babylon manifested, even in Protestant movement. People will gather crowds of people to themselves. So even the branches of Protestantism, the branches, all of them, check it, evangelical, Pentecostal, charismatic, the branches began to learn to do things like the old people, Old Testament, the robes. Whereas the Lord created the priesthood of all believers and one that empowered people by spirit, all kinds of structures were created. You needed to come, you needed to and mediator to assess Elohim. That's why the Lord is saying to his people, Come out of Babylon. These are all Babylon. The union of the church and the world. Come out of Babylon. Romans, I mean Revelation 18 from verse 1 to verse 5. To all women in ministry who can safely admonish also, come out of Babylon. Come out of the popish robes and attires that some of you are attracted to. You see, the worst is to see women, you know, in ministry go to carry all those popish robes and colors and caps and everything and stuff and, and calling themselves all manner of names and people are hailing them. Come out of Babylon. Come out of love of the microphone, the clay lights, the strobe lights and Hollywood type of stages and yearning to face the so-called Christian paparazzi. Come out of those things. Come out of the fake nails, fake bust, fake hair, ungodly exposure of sensitive body parts in poopy pornography and indeed all kinds of plasticity. Come out of the world and its attractions which are turning women in ministry into imitators of those at Hollywood and the catwalks of the world. Come out of seductiveness and become carriers of the water of life in pure vessels. He said, love not the world, none of the things that are in the world. If any love the world, the love father is not in him, in the person. For he that all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of father abides forever. Women in ministry must be real and holy. They must be who Elohim made them to be and not seek to be any other. It is to such women that the great I am has committed the ultimate betting of his end time will. That the war declared between womanhood, the seed of the woman and Satan, it didn't just end with Yeshua and the death on the cross. Every woman who is on the lost side must realize that the battle that was joined at Eden will be consummated by holy, anointed, and fearless women in ministry who will look Satan and his human cohorts eyeball to eyeball and reenact by spiritual warfare, not with hands, not with tongue, not with speaking, not with fighting, the slain of the mighty warrior Caesarah by an insignificant jail. The wife of Heber the Kenite. You find that in Jude, Judges chapter 4, 13 to 24. So, the Lord is saying, no one should keep women away from ministry. No one at all. So, we need to embrace the priesthood after the order of Melchizedek. It is number one universal. All the redeemed 
are automatically inducted into it the day you are born again. Two, it recognizes that sonship is the state of my mature relationship with the Father in which the saints are submitted to the leading of the Holy Spirit is not a function of gender. And in this setting, women are sons of Elohim in female bodies, such as male brethren are sons of Elohim in male bodies. Romans 8.14, Galatians 3.26-29, and Colossians 3. 3. The priesthood is simple and uncomplicated, as shown by Yeshua himself. You know what? On the day he was arrested, they didn't know whether it was James or John or whatever. They had to bribe Judas Iscariot to point out who is Jesus among 12 people. That was how simple he was. So simple that there was nothing to distinguish him. He didn't need a robe. And so we don't need robe. He didn't need a robe. He didn't try to be anything. He came to lay his down for the sheep. Number four, the priesthood of Melchizedek is about serving the people, serving others with gifts and callings, not ruling over people. Matthew 20, 25 to 28. And so we'll stop here today. And you know what? Tomorrow we have two lessons, one in the morning, one in the night. And we continue until we exhaust this course. By the time you've gone through all the lessons today, this is lesson 11. Each of them is approximately about 30 minutes long. By the time you finish getting through, I believe the Lord will have spoken clearly to everyone. And nobody will give room for the enemy to deny him or her the capacity to minister. However, we must take note that Paul was addressing the issue of dressing also. He was also addressing the issue of women receiving the authority of their husbands, respecting and honoring same so that they can be qualified to minister. Because a woman who is not under authority is morally disqualified to minister. Or lead other people. It's as simple as ABC from the law of the new covenant. Before we pray, let's look at assignments. Number one, please present a summary of this lesson the way you see it. Two, what is your personal takeaway for implementation? What are you going to implement? May the Lord use you to further this, distribute it, and take it further to people so that more people can come to the knowledge of the truth so that the devil will not deceive the church to shoot itself on the foot in denying women their place in ministry. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for your word. Each lesson, you bring forth something, something we can hold. Today, you brought forth the Melchizedek priesthood. Pray that all who are listening will understand and wrong with this truth, that your name may be honored and glorified. Father, have your way. There is none like you. Be thou exalted, in Yeshua Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for being with us on this program and watching. And we believe you learned something and the Lord bless you. Now it's time to connect with us on our social media platforms. We have a daily live stream on Facebook, Monday all the way to Sunday, every day about 10 30 a.m uk time and that's the same at nigerian time and you it's either apostle george monday to friday uh, to thursday pastor grace uh, friday to sunday and then in the evening of sunday we have two sessions from 5 30 to about six after six another one up to seven so please join us on the live stream and you're going to enjoy it we also visit our website www.gsom.ac to download free ebooks. This course you just listened to, all these lessons, you know, there's an ebook we have free of charge. Everything we do is free. But more importantly, you can actually do your program on, you know, ebooks. You can do your program entirely on ebooks and with this video or anyone you want you can also if you want to do the yes course or be, do the master class you can go to www.kingdomboostclub.com and you can subscribe so that you can do it you can also subscribe to our channels this youtube gsom.tv and we also have a telegram channel gsom media you can send us an email at akclife.tv at gmail.com we love you dearly and we want to partner with you to make sure that the body of Yeshua, Jesus, is empowered with truth. Remember, it is the teach, train, equip, activate, and release paradigm. Absolutely free of charge. Have a blessed day. 
and we'll see you again soon.